the panel that is going to come on will talk about one of the most important things in all of modern human existence, healthcare. So let me invite uh, uh, Loretta to give us some opening remarks and we'll get into a conversation on the challenge of healthcare in Nigeria and what we will be doing. So, but uh, uh, after Loretta's presentation, Loretta is joining us by Zoom from Sheffield, I believe, in England. And um, we'll, we'll take Ifanya and uh, Austin, who, who is here back with me. Yes, go on, Loretta. Thank you very much, Professor. Good morning. Can we all hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Excellent. We are working on turning on my video. Is it on okay. now? Okay. Fantastic. So good morning, everybody. Good morning, Professor uh, Pat Tomi. And good morning to every single person watching across the globe. Nigerians across the globe and friends of Nigeria across the globe. It is very exciting to be in the first ever Teleton organized um, in Nigeria by Nigerians for Nigerians. And it's looking at how we are going to help raise funds for those who we have decided um, need to take Nigeria to the next level, the OB Dati team. Well done, everyone. Delving straight into healthcare. Prof, I just want to thank you for that initial um, preamble that you have given. You have made my, my work really simple. And the truth is, across the world, globally, we all know that there is no modern day economy who is what it sells that does not have a standard health care. And I will introduce this subject matter today by saying well done and thank you to every single person who has worked with us from the nurses, the physiotherapists, to even the potters, the health economists, and the technical people. Too numerous to mention. Because oftentimes when people talk about healthcare, they think it's just the doctor and the nurse. No, it's a lot more than that. Healthcare is a system. And I'm going to approach this in what we usually would term the s bar today. But before I go into that, I'll say thank you again, Prof, for introducing me. My, my name is Loretta Oduari Oboroko, and I am an obstetrician and gynecologist by training, a consultant in the United Kingdom. Apart from that, I'm a medical simulation education specialist and a background in public health research from the University of Edinburgh. So let's look at this in a situation, a background, an assessment and recommendations sort of module that the ob team has adopted. The current situation is that whether we like it or not, and the principal admitted to this at Chatham House recently, Mr. Peter will be himself. His Excellency told us that health care system in Nigeria needs revamping, summarized. Nigeria has a dysfunctional health care system that is not delivering safe, available, affordable, accessible, in a quality and equitable proportion to all of us who make up the around 200 million population of this country. So that's our situation. And this has not been caused in one day. It has been a gradual deterioration over the years. So when you now look at this background, you can just sum it up by what the National Bureau of Statistics released in November 2022. And they told us how 133 million of us are in multi-dimensional poverty. So the Obidati government, when we come on board as the team that is managing the affairs of Nigeria, have decided that we must make healthcare a front burner issue and bring it straight 
to those 133 million people and beyond. It must go back to the basics. So we did an assessment. Pharmacist OKK and all of the other people sat down across the world and decided that what can Nigeria do? We looked at healthcare systems in developed countries like the UK, where you have the NHS. We looked at America, where you have the capitalist system. And then we looked at other countries in Asia and how they've sprung up as well. After looking at all of these systems, we came back home and did a strong situational analysis on Nigeria, as well as a root cause analysis. We also looked at our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities and threats in terms of healthcare. And then following this assessment, we came to the conclusion that for us to bring healthcare right to the basics, to the front burner, to be available to these 133 million people, we have to domesticate all of this information we have gotten from studying all of these other people, domesticate it to a Nigerian solution-based healthcare system. So what recommendations did we make? The recommendations that we made are the interventions you are going to be seeing in this social contract with the people, the manifesto, and what the OBDATI government plans to do. These recommendations are along seven lines. If you go on to Google and you Google the pillars of healthcare, WHO is going to come up and tell you that there are six pillars of healthcare standard. However, following a domestication of the solutions to our own healthcare indices that are not very brilliant in Nigeria, for instance, you have approximately 150 women dying daily, maternal mortality rates in Nigeria, when you break it down to the granular level, because WHO says it's 600 per 100,000 live births. But I have done the statistics and brought that down to a granular level, and it's an amazing and saddening 150 women on an average dying in Nigeria daily from um, just performing their reproductive duties. These indices are not nice, but the recommendations are in sevenfold if we want to domesticate our own. It is not the standard sixfold of the WHO. And this is what you are going to see in the Obidati Manifesto, as well as when the Obidati government comes on board. The first pillar that we are very concerned about is leadership and governance. I'll run through them a bit quickly and then just take them very, very quickly. You have leadership and governance, it's key. You have human resource. Human resource for health is very, very important. Then we have healthcare financing or funding. Nothing's gonna happen without funding or financing. And of course there's health service delivery, which we are pointing out we must mainstream primary health care, if we want to get to those 103 million people. You have healthcare information systems and management. And we have number six as medicines, vaccines, and pharmaceuticals. And number seven, of course, you're going to have research and development where you're going to have your robust auditing systems, monitoring, and evaluation. So this is a big summary of the seven pillars that we are adopting in the Obidati um, government. Now, leadership and governance. Any healthcare system worth its salt must have the right pegs in the right hole. You must have a focused leadership at the top, and this is going to trickle down to all other components or sub-professionals in the healthcare system. Again, I'm using the word system. So your nurses, your nurses, your midwifery, all of that. People just think, oh, it's the Minister for Health. No, there's a lot more that happens than the Minister for Health. Healthcare does not stand alone. It's going to dovetail into other ministries, departments, agencies of government. We must have an interagency and collaboration as well as an intergovernmental um, collaboration. So that means at the federal, state, and local government level, 
driving the PHC. People would say that primary health care is under the purview of the local government. Yes, that may be right, but then we need the federal government to actually provide leadership at that level. Everything we already need in healthcare is in our National Health Act from 2014. And the Obidati government is going to make sure that this is properly enacted when they come on board. We respect to all of these pillars, starting with leadership and governance. Now, if we go to the next pillar, which is human resource for health, you're going to find out that there is something we need, and that is data, data, data. How many doctors are in Nigeria? How many graduated? How many are left? How many nurses do we have? Physiotherapists, healthcare workers, choose what is happening in these different sectors closer to these 133 million people. So there's going to be a mapping of Nigeria's healthcare occupational categories and then an overhauling, restructuring, training for all healthcare providers in their different cadre. And then we need to make them fit for purpose. We need to make them fit for purpose because sometimes we are deceived that when we have um, hospitals, you see people just building hospitals, building structures, but those structures will not provide health. Those structures are not skilled. So human resource for health is key. And this is where we are going to think about things like task shifting and task sharing. And what does this mean? It's simple. You know, in, in, in the WHO recommendations, for instance, they will tell you that you need to have at least um, one doctor to about 600, 1,000 patients. However, in Nigeria, we know that that is not the case. So the Obidati team as well as the policy group on health, thanks to the multiple men and women across the world, sat down and thought, what do we do? And we find out that for Nigeria, we a 200 million population, a lot of them in the rural areas, we need to become primary health care base heavy. It's like a triangle. The base of that triangle is primary health care, which is going to increase our prevention and is going to cut costs eventually, if you look at the economics of health, in terms of interventions, if and when we get it right. So how do we cater for 200 million people with our scarce healthcare provider um, um, availability when a lot of them, nurses, midwives, physiotherapists, pharmacists, have all gone abroad? The plan and the key is with task shifting and task sharing. Take, for instance, we know what community health extension workers are. We know what they do. So as part of the human resource for health development, for instance, we are going to ensure that these people are trained. School of Health Technologies are working. They are trained and they become skilled and properly regulated. So what then happens? You are able to devolve these people into the rural areas as far as they are well-trained and know when to refer to the tertiary institutions. And then you are going to have less attrition rates because a lot of them will probably be from these areas. And of course, there will be incentives as well. So tax shifting and tax sharing is very important. We'll have to develop the number of advanced nurse practitioners and I, I heard someone saying the other day that the principal, um, His Excellency uh, Peter Obi was saying that he would establish nursing schools across the local government areas in Nigeria. And I said they may have misunderstood that because it is building the capacity of healthcare providers across the 700 local government areas of Nigeria, not necessarily establishing nursing schools in each of them. And we must realize that a lot of structures are already in existence. So it is a lot of renovation. If you move on from health resource for health, um, human resource for health, to healthcare financing, we need to know that the SDGs has as number three that health is paramount and must be financed. And there was an Abuja declaration. Um, 
which stated that we should have at least 15% of our national budget devoted to health. My brothers and sisters, friends across the world, today's current budget fraction for health is abysmal. It looks like we do not understand that each and every one of us are potential Nigerian patients. Even when Mr. Peter Obi and his eyes assume power tomorrow, they are still potential Nigerian patients. And every single Nigerian patient is worth it. So for this number three pillar of healthcare financing and funding, the plan is to increase gradually, scale up the budget for health. That's the first thing. Scale it up over the first four years and make sure that we get to that 15% that is recommended by the Sustainable Development Goals and the Abuja Declaration. It is very important. And then we need to then think about other ways to generate funding for health. And we need to step out the box, which is what we did in the policy team with the deep dive team as well, helping us. We found out that the National Health Insurance Authority Act is there, but implementation has been low. This document, which is made up of, I think, 10 parts and 60 sections, is something that the Obidati administration is going to go back to. Like I said, all these things that are already there, we need to implement them. And we are going to implement them to the letter at the state and federal levels. But then we must also make sure that we push that there is no um, repetition because that's, that's a major problem right now. But we have identified that and we're going to make sure that at state and federal levels, your cover within the national health insurance is actually suitable for you. And one thing that we have come up with is that every Nigerian must have a unique health identification number, you know? And I will explain this a bit more later. But other than our own budget increasing and the NHIA Act being implemented at all levels, we have to reason out of the box and think about ways of financing healthcare. The public-private partnership models that have worked in other countries can also work in Nigeria. We need to get our industries, product, production agents, big merchants, and um, big entrepreneurs to start keying into healthcare as part of their corporate social responsibility. Take example, there's nothing that stops a big industry or entrepreneur in Abe or Kuta, for instance, from adopting a primary healthcare center, renovating it and bringing it up to speed, following a pact with the local government in that area as it may be. So these are things we are going to look at. We are going to also look at special taxes on example like tobacco, alcohol, and many other things. We need to consider, and this has been given great thought, duty waivers. Duty waivers for imports that are going to improve Nigeria's healthcare system, especially when they relate to primary health care. And obviously, there will be special funds and endowment for specific tertiary care um, aspects like cancer. Some of these things existed, but they never, never followed through or seen to a logical manifestation that benefits the 133 million people, probably because we didn't understand that every single Nigerian patient is worth it. If we move on from healthcare financing and we go on to um, service delivery, which is the uh, next part, we need to understand that at this point, we need to mainstream public health care. Again, it's coming back to public health care. This is going to be a bottom heavy approach. We must reach those interlands. And how are we going to do this? We are going to domesticate our approach. We are going, even in terms of transportation and emergency responses, for instance. Think about 
the water laden geographical areas of Nigeria. Think about the rocky areas, the savannas. And then think about how do people there get healthcare and how are they referred? How do they get to the nearest referral center, either secondary or tertiary? A simple example. If you are in the River Rhine area, for instance, have you thought about it? That a motorboat as an ambulance would be more effective than the conventional ambulances you see in other countries. These have been trialed and it works. So as part of our health service delivery, all of these are things we are going to implement at the Obidati government level domesticating health care so that the 133 million dimensionally poor and other Nigerians know and are able to say, yes, we have a health care that knows that we are worth it. If we move from health care service delivery, we go on to health information systems and management. Our world has moved on. The world is a global village. Healthcare is not left out at all. And if you look in the manifesto, you're going to see where we've talked about using ICT to bring healthcare home back to the basics. We have electronic medical rec records being developed and being centralized. So we are going to trickle down and also move up. And we are going to find out that. This is going to revolutionize healthcare provision in Nigeria. Because if we have a solid ICT system in health and information, nothing stops us from having a consultation with a medical team in the United Kingdom or with another in the United States. And this is also where, along with the um, resource for health and even service delivery, they all overlap. We are going to tap into our diaspora population. Whether we like it or not, a lot of people who leave Nigeria, they leave Nigeria, get to the resource rich nations. I don't like to call them developed nations because we are developed in our own way as well. The resource rich nations and they change their professional pathway. So. Looking at the population of Nigerian dynamics outside of Nigeria, you find that we are healthcare professional or providers heavy. Now, why can we not utilize this tool? Why can we not reverse brain drain to actually become brain gain and utilize this in human resource for health and obviously in health information system and management? So if you have a team of for instance, maybe a retired, or even retired, maybe you have a surgeon in the United States, you have another one in the UK, you have a radiographer in Pakistan, and you have maybe a midwife in Indonesia. They are all Nigerians. What stops them from forming a team that electronically can be linked and they can be consulted? from a village in a Edo state, maybe Ubuyoko or Udo, or somewhere in the north, Karanamoda. Nothing stops us. The world right now is borderless and very fluid. So this number five healthcare information systems and management is where you are going to have all of the data and all of the info systems and all of the technology, dovetailing into the other pillars. Pillar number six, which I would have really loved Ifai OKK to talk on, I don't know if he's here right now, but he can unmute and talk about pillar number six and pillar number seven. Pillar number six is medicines, vaccines, and pharmaceuticals. And Nigerians, in case you don't know, let me tell you that the Obidati administration, when they come on, are already looking, already looking to create and domestic malaria vaccine. Well done, um, pharmacist Ifa in your KK. Do you want to talk to us about 
medicines, vaccines, and pharmaceuticals, as well as research and development. Because like you know, yes, yes. yes we are moving from consumption to production. So right on, sir. Can you um can you share your video? Yes, my video is on. Okay, we can see you now, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Okay, you can hear me. Okay, okay. that's good. We're gonna hear you so fine. Go let ahead. me uh, briefly on the area of vaccines, uh, uh, medicines, safe medicines. Uh, my name is uh, Ifani Justino Keke. I'm a pharmacist. And uh, I want to thank Professor Pato Tommy for this opportunity. And also our team lead, Dr. Loretta Oborioko. You've done justice to the topic. And uh, as a matter of fact, you've also made my own job easier. So what I want to say is that the OB that team is going to remove obstacles that have been holding us down in this important area of our health system components, which is the area of safe, good quality, and affordable essential drugs for our citizens. We have our essential drugs law. We also have our National Health Act. And uh, giving you a little background, because I'm going to talk from experience. I'm going to talk from experience. Having uh, lived in Anambra State for all the years of my practice. And you know that uh, I experienced firsthand uh, Governor Obi's government, eight years in Anambra State. So, and uh, I'm a pharmacist of over 25 years experience. I'm a fellow of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. I'm also a fellow of the West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacists. And I'm also a trained lawyer with over 15 years, this is 15 years experience. In my village in Anambra State here, I'm the chairman of health committee of my village, overseeing the health post, and I'm also the chairman of the health committee of my ward, also overseeing the health center. So what, I'm also a community pharmacist and also have a background of medical marketing. I've lived all my life practicing in Nigeria. So the wonder about of the obedity team dwells on the C's we've been talking about competence, capacity, and character of the team. But in, from the character, I want to draw out the three, another three Cs that I have seen my former governor has, which is compassion, courage, and credibility. Bringing it down to the area of pharmaceutical manufacturing, I want to say that Obidati government is going to launch the first malaria vaccine from Nigeria. That's a takeaway. We have the capacity to do that. In fact, Nigeria used to have a vaccine lab here in Oshodi, which uh, was later acquired by Mayor Baker. Obidati government is going to remove every obstacle and make and ensure that our first malaria vaccine is launched. Because prevention is a, an essential component of our healthcare delivery. Other vaccines that will be launched under Obidati government include five important childhood vaccines for diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, polio, and hemophilus influenza type B. These are killer diseases for children. And also very important vaccine for pregnant mothers, which is tetanus toxoid. 
this Nigeria is going to be a hub for these vaccines. We import them from India and China. And uh, from the data we have from uh, United Nations Comtrade database shows that Nigeria importation in 2021 was $1.3 billion. When we, when we talk about moving from consumption to production, what the Ovidati uh, government is going to do is to, apart from manufacture of these vaccines locally, we are going to export and also make revenue from them. Having said that, I want to talk about active pharmaceutical ingredients. You know that everybody, you, in fact, there's no way you go to hospital and go home satisfied without your drugs. Most of our active pharmaceutical ingredients are imported into Nigeria. We have many of them in Nigeria, but we still import. Let me give you an example. Our common uh, bitter leaf, we eat it every day. Research has shown that bitter leaf is used in the management of diabetes. Our researchers in Nigeria have done a lot of work. Why can't we have bitter leaf tablets in Nigeria? Some parts of the world are already marketing it after their clinical trials. So we are going to produce active by school ingredients in Nigeria, not just active ingredients. Obidati government is going to ensure that excipients are produced locally because we have them here in abundance. For example, pharmaceutical grade starch. We have a lot of starch in Nigeria from your maize, from your cassava. But we don't process them for the use of our own local manufacturers. Obidati government is going to remove every bottleneck for these starches to be produced for our tablets, for our syrups not just for Nigerian con uh, consumption, but for import. Let's say we have a technical glitch for pharmacy for your KK dead. The current Nigeria has happened to him, uh, but rest assured that once Obi Dati comes on board, that Nigeria that ha just happened now will be a thing of the past. So just to complete from where he has stopped, um, the pharmaceuticals are going to be big, like he said, production in such a way that we even become super producers and generators of income. I know that healthcare everywhere gulps income, but the plan by the Obidati administration is to turn our healthcare around in such a manner that even while we are catering for the 133 million dimensionally poor and all of Nigerians, we are still able to generate income by thinking out of the box, by moving from production, from consuming to production. And an example, just to further buttress where he rounded up, is think about having sub-regional centers, big ones in Nigeria, just by a reversal of our brain gain and optimization of our workforce and getting the right eggs and the right holes, as well as working across different NDAs in Nigeria. They are already happening. You can imagine us having interventional cardiology, where I know that a lot of Nigerian diasporans have come back home, as well as neurosurgery and in their troplasties having big hubs and big centers for these places run by people who actually have the skill as it abounds in resource-rich nations in the world. Just imagine what will happen. We are going to become a hub in sub-Saharan Africa for, de for, for delivering this specialized care. So to sort of round up, um, and I want to thank pharmacist OKK and all the people around the world who have really, really worked on this. People like Dr. Isamiel, Paul J, pharmacist Remira, the many nurses and midwives, um, 
uh, Dr. Douglas Ocall, a lot of them, Salvation Alibo, who doesn't sleep, I wake him up in the middle of the night. Nigerians are cross board for all the ideas you have sent to us. We want to sort of round up. I'll, I'll round up now and let the people in the studio continue for a while and come back if we have to. I'll round up by saying that healthcare is not free anywhere in the world mm. where you have standard safe healthcare. And we must make it available, accessible, and affordable by all, especially our 133 million multi-dimensionally poor. I didn't say it. Loretta Aduare borrowed Oko didn't say it. That is the result from the research carried out by our own National Bureau of Statistics just in November last year. We need to bring this healthcare to that market woman in Aba, that market woman in Sokoto, the person in Oba market in Nigeria. Think about it. Our mothers sit in this market. They don't have healthcare system that they can go to. They just want to trade. A massive awareness in all the local languages and actually bringing healthcare to them. That's what you call community entry point in public healthcare provision. Go to the chiefs, go to the psyches, go to them and let them be the community entry point. They will hold our hand. This is what the Obidati team is planning, where the people we hold our hand and say, look at this, our primary health care center. It is not functional. And then they watch us renovate it. Some of them will be the bricklayers renovating it. Some of them will be the carpenters. They will not have ownership of this process. They will now have ownership of their own healthcare provision apparatus, and they will protect and guard it with their life. It's been experimented in outback areas in Canada, and it works. There is nothing that says that we cannot domesticate these approaches. And then we actually empower those healthcare providers who will now be in those areas. Take the traditional bed care attendants, for instance. They are all in our villages. I'm sure we all know those women who deliver women in the houses. But nothing stops us from actually going out and training these people, training them so that they know the signs of what to look out for. And I like to use examples because it brings us closer home. We train them and we certify them. And they know that if a woman has been in labor for over 12 hours, they should start sending to the nearest healthcare, uh, secondary healthcare provision place, like the general hospitals. They know that if a woman is bleeding suddenly a lot more than they can manage, we can tell them what to use to measure. It may be two pads. By the time two pads is so she needs to be referred. By the time they know all of these things, then they'll refer. The question is, for instance, if there are bad roads that people cannot navigate, then we can provide them, for instance, with tricycles. It's been trialed in Kenya. And they get these people to the nearest areas. So the, when they get to the nearest areas, they get to the right area where they can then assess health in the right way for them, individualized to that problem. So we must begin to think out the box. We don't have all the doctors, nurses, and midwives in the world to manage our 200 million population. But like I stated clearly in the seven pillar recommendation that we've come up with following our assessment of Nigeria's unique healthcare challenge, you can see that we just need the will and the right leadership, which is what Obidati administration is going to provide. And they're going to do this for one reason and one reason only. And that is because they know that every single Nigerian patient is what it is. Thank we you. Are. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Loretta. Thank you. I mean, what a, a remarkable um, explication of a major challenge. Um, <clears throat> by the way, uh, Loretta is practicing in the UK 
her husband, who's a neurosurgeon, came back from the UK and is practicing in Abuja. And the contributions that come from this kind of engagement of Nigerian healthcare professionals can really make us a destination for medical tourism rather than our pumping money into India uh, and all of that. But that's part of the, the program of the Obidati administration as it uh, comes on. Um, we'll just quickly round up healthcare, uh, Austin and I uh, sitting here in the studio, because we need to go to power. And I know Jerome is anxious uh, not before he gets on a flight uh, to speak to that. But Austin, you know this healthcare business. It's very, very painful thing. I was going to, you know, the Center for Values in Leadership yeah. had um, these clubs around. And I was going to speak several years ago at a CVL club at uh, the uh, Onobanjo, Abisi Onobanjo University Medical School in Shagamu uh, to the CVL uh, me club members. Yes. And speaking before me was a, was then a uh, provost, I think, of the University of Lagos College of Medicine. Mm -hmm. Uh, said it, professor, I think it was Funsho or so. And as I came in, his words were, the Nigeria health care system is a man-made disaster. Mm -hmm. Now, it is. how do you, uh, with all the talents available, yeah. uh, what do you think we should be doing to create both the awareness and the policy focus, which the team, in this case, with... Dr. Loretta and co have worked up uh, stuff. How do we get people to own this process, realize that their health is truly their wealth and that it's in their hands? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, first, the starting point <coughs> is the mindset. Mm. We need to uh, change the mindset, uh, starting from the government, for instance, so that they will realize the value of the human life. Mm that um, you know, the, the, the value of human life matters a lot. And uh, from that, you can begin to build uh, uh, the, you know, the health system that will give that um, you know, assurance that if anybody is sick, he goes uh, to the hospital, and then he will get the medical attention that he requires. Accountability. Accountability. You know, people who help account yes. to account for ensuring that life That's right. is... You know, and it goes with you know, just the attitude of the health uh, professionals you know I'm, I'm a case in point mm. i am just uh, recuperating from health issue and um, when i was really sick i went to ikeja general hospital one the doctor never opened his mask to at least let me see the face <laughs> that's why he never smiled you know those <laughs> customer service uh, things mm. now my my bp was about close to 300 wow. and they rushed me to um the emergency, and they attended to me right in the car. There was no space for anybody to come out. You see cars parked, and everybody, the doctors will come through the window and say, what is wrong with you? They check your temperature, they, they, they make the other recommendation, he walks away to the other car. I said, where in the world do you have that system? My, uh, my nephew, my, you know, I'll call him my nephew, my distance uh, relation, and over the weekend, on the, on the 14th, fell ill, and they took him to the same Ikeja General Hospital, the same no bed space. Bagada General Hospital, no bed space. And he ended up right now at the private hospital. So these are the things that are the starting point. And then the, um, the, uh, uh, Dr. Loretta made a point of the diaspora population, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, the human resource, mm -hmm. you know, which also you were quite aware helped India uh, to, um, you know, to, to um, you know, to a great expense to build a new, a new nation as we are trying to build now. And most of the, some of the major medical facilities are now being built by Indians in Nigeria. So rather than taking the whole thing out, they're not bringing it in. So it's something that Obidati uh, government will be able to address as soon as um, mm. it comes on stream yeah. to be sure that everywhere that health it's actually wealth. I just realized that, mm. you know, because well, I've been through it. Yes, yes, yes. There's nothing that teaches like experience. Yeah. But just uh, before we go 
to the next segment. Uh, uh, a quick thing, a uh, point made by a pharmacist, uh, Fanyo KK, about manufacturing in Nigeria. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about going from consumption to production. And, we, and, and part of the strategy, economic strategy, that the Obidati team is working on is called uh, essentially building on your latent comparative advantage where you look at your factor endowments yes. and construct your global value chains in which maximum input is made in Nigeria manufacturing for export and for local consumption. Um, Nigeria could become a pharmaceutical giant uh, manufacturing and exporting even though we are putting literally everything now. You know, amongst the things that you get complaints about is, oh, we don't get um, industrial grade starch, something as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Cassava is all oh, over yeah. the place. Yeah. And so we must have industrial policy that facilitates right. being able to dominate certain global That's value right. chains yes. where the factor endowments allow us to play there. Right. And it clearly puts us in a position to become leaders in pharmaceutical exports rather than today being more than net receiver of inputs of mystical production or in fact of medicines coming from around the world i think that this is part of where the economic strategy teams the pharmaceutical and healthcare teams ensure that there is synergy and that our competitiveness as a country goes up okay i think uh, we can keep healthcare there we'll return to it all through the conversation today. We'll come back to healthcare in different ways, but we'll go on to other uh, issues. And I suspect this is a time to have uh, Adeboye take it away and uh, we'll find out where Dr. Jerome Okoro, Okolo uh, is so that we can get to, to him and the power people. <laughs>